What's up, what's going on guys? It's Migs and this is my friend Kirsten. We're out here on another Polar Pro adventure. This time we traveled 431 miles from our headquarters in Southern California to Zion National Park in Utah. And man, this place is amazing. Hit him up with some facts, Kirsten. So Zion's actually one of the oldest national parks in Utah and one of the most well-known national parks in the U.S., if not the world. And it's super easy to see why. And what's crazy is this place formed 250 million years ago and the geological features are still changing today. While we're out here, we wanted to share with you guys what filters we most often use on photography trips like this one. So on this video, we're going to talk about when and why you should use polarizing and neutral density filters. And so we're gonna share some advice with you that we've learned with using these filters. So our first destination today is gonna to be Angel's Landing. We're gonna take the Grotto Trail, which is connecting from the Zion Lodge to the West Rim Trailhead. While we're in the Grotto Trail, we're gonna talk about one of the more common filters you're likely to come across in photography, which is the neutral density or ND filters. So the ND filter is great for situations where you wanna reduce your shutter speed. Say maybe in bright conditions where you wanna capture the sunrise or the sunset in a time lapse. ND filters come in different strengths. The darker the filter means less light is hitting your sensor, enabling longer exposures. So today we're gonna to be messing around with the ND64, ND1000, and all the way up to the ND100000. So these ND filters will reduce shutter speed and bright lights to create smooth motion blur on the moving water and blend the movement of clouds against the bright blue sky. It can even help remove unwanted tourists from our long exposure. So we found this pretty cool composition where the bridge is right in front of the mountains. We're gonna use the ND64PL for this shot so we can darken up the sky with the polarizer and expose for the foreground objects. So we've reached a really beautiful spot here at the Virgin River and we can clearly see angels landing in the background. To illustrate the differences between these filters, we're gonna use one of our darker filters, which is the ND1000 with 10 stops of light reduction. So let's get this thing set up and let's get the shots. As you can see with the first shot with the ND1000, there's definitely some glare in the water, but what an ND filter does is that you can slow down your shutter speed and it blurs out the motion in the water, so it makes it like a silky smooth ribbon. All right, let's head out of here so we can get some more examples. So it looks like the clouds are dissipating and we got a window for bright blue skies. It's a perfect opportunity for us to show you what the circular polarizer does to the sky. Also, a friendly little tip for you guys, if you want to get the most out of your polarizer, be sure you shoot 90 degrees away from the sun. So you can see with the first shot without the polarizer that the sky was pretty blown out. So when we put the polarizer on, you could definitely saturate the sky and get more details with the clouds and not have it blown out. All right, so that was the circular polarizer. Now let's head to Angel's Landing and get some more shots with different filters. All right guys, so it's getting hot. It's time to shed some layers and then we're gonna continue to hike. All right, so um, yeah, this is not the spot, guys. We gotta go around. Mm -hmm. 
Yes! We're here at the top of Angel's Landing. Yeah, so the clouds are moving and it looks like a perfect opportunity for some long exposure photos, so let's get it started. So we're about two and a half miles away from Grotto Trail up here at Angel's Landing. We hiked up about 1,500 feet vertically. It was a bit exhausting, but we made it. All right, so we just got set up out here. The clouds are moving pretty fast and we want to get a decent shot. So we're going to get some long exposure shots of the vast valley below. And for that, we're going to use our ND1000 filter, which is a 10 stop neutral density filter. Perfect for long exposures just like this. For this shot, it's actually brighter than expected, so I'm going to switch out the ND1000 for the ND100,000, and then we'll see what kind of shot we can get with that. So with the ND100,000, we're letting in less light, which means we can compensate by lowering the shutter speed, which gives us more motion blur in the clouds. So as you can see with the ND100,000, there's more movement in the clouds, so it blurs it out and it makes it look like it's surreal. All right, so we got some really great shots today with the ND100,000. We're gonna go ahead and head back down and go camp out in the valley, and we'll see you tomorrow at the Narrows. But first, let's get some food. <laughs> Good morning guys, it's day two out here and we're on our way to the Temple of Sinawava, which is the gateway to the Narrows. Also, the Narrows is relatively slow this time of year, so we're stoked and not too worried about the tourist crowds that summer brings. The one thing we're worried about is getting hypothermia and freezing out there, but we rented out dry suits, so we're gonna try that out. All right, so we just made it to the mouth of the Narrows. The first filter we're gonna talk about is the ND64, which is a six stop neutral density that's perfect for mid aperture shots and low light conditions like what we have here. What's crazy is some sections of this canyon is over 2000 feet deep and super narrow. So you get some cool lighting effects depending on the time of day. So the ND64 is gonna slow our shutter speed down so we can shoot with longer exposures of two seconds or more in this bright light. All right, so let's check out the ND64 in action. So for this shot, I'm gonna have Kirsten stand in front of the composition. My shutter speed is at two seconds and my aperture is at F22. That should be enough for some motion blur and remove some glare from the water with this ND64. So let's check out the shot.
Migs, those are some really good shots. Let's go get some more examples. So while shopping around for filters, you might have seen ND and PLs and wondered what that was. So Mix is going to give you a little explanation about those. The ND PL is a combination filter that not only polarizes your shot, but also has the neutral density coating to reduce light. The main benefit of having an ND filter is that it allows you to shoot through one glass element instead of stacking an ND and a polarizer filter to achieve the same effect. So the more mediums you shoot through, the more your images are gonna be degraded and the more artifacts that are actually gonna be introduced to your photos. All right, sweet. So let's have a look and see how a filter like this works. So we're gonna shoot with the ND1000PL with and without so we can show you the difference, how it could take out the glare from the water. So as you guys can see, there's a bunch of glare in the water from the reflection of the sunlight. So if you turn the polarizer a little bit, it cuts down the glare by a significant amount so your photos would be more clear and you can see what's underneath the water. So we have the shutter speed at 30 seconds so we can have a bunch of motion blur on the water and our aperture is at 5.6. Alright guys so for this one I'm shooting with the ND64PL because I'm trying to expose for the highlights in the background. And then I'm reducing the glare using the polarizer on the water. I'm going to be shooting at a 2 second shutter. All right, so for this one, I'm still using an ND64PL, but I'm exposing for the water on this shot, but I'm trying to reduce glare by using the polarizer. So yeah, check it out. This first shot is without a filter. You can see that there's no motion blur on the water and there's a bunch of glare. This next shot, we're putting a neutral density on and you can see that by slowing down the shutter with a neutral density, there's motion blur on the water. And for our last shot, this is when we use the polarizing effect of the NDPL, which gives us a really nice effect by taking down the glare and blurring out the motion of the water. All right, that's it for today. We're back at the car. I'm wet, cold, and tired, but today was definitely worth it. What do you think, Kirsten? It was totally worth it, and we really hope that the photos we got today get to justify the beauty that we got to see. If you guys haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button, and we also hope that you guys learned a few things about long exposure photos. Also, join us on our next adventure when we hit Arches National Park. Peace. <laughs>